Hello again, Mother Factors. We have a great episode for you today. Just terrific, believe me. Yes, this time we're talking about the POTUS and prominent steak salesman with the biggest hands in the business for pointing, grabbing, and uh, potentially pushing nuke buttons. Yes, it's Donald Trump. But there are so many questions about the Donald. Like, what's the weirdest thing he's ever licensed? Is his real name actually Drumpf? And hey, is America great again yet? Just asking for a friend. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so prepare for accusations of liberal cuckdom and fake news as we plunge deep into 101 facts about Donald Trump. Number one. Donald J. Trump was born on June the 14th, 1946 at the Jamaica Hospital Medical Center in Queens, New York City, to parents Mary Ann Trump and Frederick Christ Trump. Yep, that's right, his father's middle name was literally Christ. Christ. Number two. As you may well already be aware, Donald Trump is the 45th president of the United States of America. I mean, that should be pretty obvious. He's in that big house right over there. Well, either that or playing golf or something. Number three. Yes, Trump shocked the world when he won the presidency back in 2016, but he's actually run for president before, way back in 2000. It wasn't with those Dems or Repubs either. Oh no, this was with the alternative Reform Party. He even speculated that Oprah was going to be his running mate. However, he ended the campaign four months after he started it. Number four. Though he doesn't look it with his luscious locks, Trump is also the oldest person to be elected president, at the relatively advanced age of 70, breaking the previous record of 69, <laughs> held by Ronald Reagan. Number five. Trump is very, very rich, like richy, rich, rich, and he's not exactly shy about it. But the true extent of Donald's dollar dollar bills is a matter of intense scrutiny. He claims he's worth more than 10 billion, but independent figures vary wildly. Forbes, for example, puts the figure at 3.5, and Bloomberg even reported he'd slipped to 2.9 in June 2017. Uh-oh. I'm sure the Donald would insist that's fake news, but hey, that's more than I've ever had, and probably ever will. Number six. The J in Donald J. Trump stands for John, which is kind of disappointingly normal. I was expecting something along the lines of Chandler Muriel Bing. Hey-ho. Number seven. As a child, Trump and his siblings were not allowed to own any pet, and is in fact the first US president in over 120 years not to have a pet at the White House. Sad. Although I did hear in the news recently he had a mad dog named Mattis or something? Hey, that must be alternative fact. Number eight. Trump was known as a troublemaker as a teen, so his parents decided to send little Donnie to military school in the hope of reforming his bad attitude. Did it work? Well... I suppose that depends on your political affiliations, really. Number nine. This was pretty much the end of Donald Trump's military career. He didn't fight in the Vietnam War because he had a number of deferments, including a famous diagnosis of bone spurs in one of his feet. Number 10. Trump is very lucky in love as he's been married three times. Firstly, with model and businesswoman Ivana Zelnichkova, then actress and beauty pageant winner with a superhero's name, Marla Maples, and he's currently married to former model and first lady, Melania Trump. Number 11. The originally Slovenian Melania is the second ever first lady to be born outside the US, after London-born Louisa Catherine Adams, the wife of John Quincy Adams, who was president from 1825 to 1829. You go, Melania, breaking national boundaries and looking fierce while you're at it. Number 12. Trump's wife Melania is said to be fluent in several languages, including her native Slovene, as well as English, French, Italian, German, and Serbo-Croatian. Number 13. Trump has five children between his three wives, Donald Jr., Ivanka, Eric, Tiffany, and Baron. Hey, they're better named than Sarah Palin's kids. Number 14. Baron is Donald Trump's only child with Melania, and as such, he speaks fluent Slovene, a skill that will surely serve him well should he, the son of the American president, decide to live in Slovenia. Number 15. The three oldest children, Donald, Ivanka, and Eric, have all taken places in their father's business empire and contributed to the Trump administration or campaign in some way. Ivanka probably doing so the most, as in literally sitting in meetings when, I mean, God knows why. While Tiffany has taken on a different career as a model, and Baron, well, Baron's 11, he doesn't need a job. Yet. Number 16. Trump first found his fortune in the lofty heights of lavish Manhattan property development. You know, just like every other budding entrepreneur. Number 17. 
But seriously, he had his infamously well-publicized start after that small loan of $1 million from his father, actual quote by the way, which he contested wasn't that much compared to what he'd built. Man, my dad won't even lend me money for a taxi. I have to get a bus with Billy Bush everywhere. Number 18. So yes, after that small loan, he eventually built the Trump Organization and ultimately turned it into a business empire. In 1973, when Trump was just 27 years old, the real estate tycoon owned 14,000 apartments that were located throughout Staten Island, Queens, and Brooklyn. Number 19. The young Donald Trump's first major project was the Commodore Hotel in 1976, a failing business that he snapped up in partnership with the Hyatt organization and repackaged as the Grand Hyatt. You know, I'm kind of surprised it wasn't called the Grand Trump. Number 20. The Donald loves to trump up his negotiation skills. <laughs> Get it? And to be fair, he wasn't wrong when it came to that deal. According to the BBMFNC, he managed to convince the city of New York to give him a 40-year tax break that saved $160 million over that time. Ha <laughs> that's a huge deal. Number 21. Speaking of deals, Donald literally wrote a book on them. Well, he kind of did. The Art of the Deal was published in 1987 and credited to both Trump and journalist Tony Schwartz. It's a hybrid of Trump's memoirs and his advice on succeeding in business. Though I feel like it probably should have included a chapter on how not to go bankrupt six times, but more on that later. Look what you made me do. What it did include, however, was an 11-step guide to succeeding in business. It had all the normal platitudes and generally prudent moves, like understanding your market and containing costs, concluding with a simple, have fun. And you know, that's just nice. It makes business sound all warm and fuzzy. Number 23. The art of the deal was a resounding success, with 48 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list and 13 at number one, totaling an estimated 1.1 million copies sold as of 2016. Trump claims it's the highest selling business book of all time and Don, as big of a deal as it is, it isn't. How to Win Friends and Influence People, for example, had 15 million estimated sales. Number 24. Tony Schwartz, though, isn't too happy with the book's legacy. The ghostwriter told newspapers that he feels personally implicated in Trump's presidency, claiming he, and this is a quote, put lipstick on that pig with his portrayal of Trump as a business wizard, or bizard, as they're known by no one. After having spent months in the 80s establishing an intimate knowledge of the guy, he says that if he was to pen the book now, he'd simply call it The Sociopath. Ouch. Number 25. 62% of Google searches about GOP candidates during the 2016 Republican presidential primaries were about Trump, more than all of the party's other candidates combined. I mean, that's not even slightly surprising. The other hopefuls, like Low Energy Jeb, were as about as interesting as the documentary on management consultancy. Although actually I'd say that's changed given what happened to Ted Cruz this week. <laughs> Learn how to use a like button, Ted. Anyway. Number 26. Despite his vast Mr. Burns-like wealth, the self-proclaimed master businessman isn't shy of declaring bankruptcy. And in my head, he does it exactly like Michael Scott every time. He claims he has made the declaration four times, but according to PolitiFact, the number stands at six. In other words, enough times to assume he's the easiest Monopoly opponent ever. Number 27. The first bankruptcy claim came in 1990 with the billion dollar Trump Taj Mahal Casino, which managed to rack up a staggering $3 billion in debt in just a year. Hey, that's gambling for you. As a result, he had to sell his yacht and his airline, luxuries nobody could do without. I know that I couldn't live without my yacht, the SS completely imaginary made up not real. Number 28. In 1990, Trump threatened to sue the stockbroker firm Janie Montgomery Scott after one of their analysts, Marvin Rothman, said the Trump Taj Mahal wouldn't survive financially. Rothman was fired for flatly refusing to say the hotel would be successful, but then won a 750,000 arbitration case against his former employer and sued Trump as well, settling out of court. He used the money to start his own business, so I guess standing up to Donald Trump can have a happy ending, eventually. Number 29. Only another two years later in 1992, Trump declared bankruptcy three times in 12 months, losing massive stakes in two different Trump plazas and even Trump Castle, which, yes, was an actual real place. He then did the same thing again in 2004 and 2009. Number 30. Fred Trump, Donald's father, was a real estate developer through most of his life, mostly building low-cost housing in New York, unlike the likes of the lavish hotels and resorts his son pioneered. Number 31. There's a bit of fuss about the origin of the Donald surname. 
Some people think it's actually Drumpf, mainly due to a misunderstanding of Don Oliver's admittedly hilarious Make Donald Drumpf Again campaign. But in fact, that was never actually his name, and the connection to German Drumpfs from hundreds of years ago has never been definitively proven. Number 32. Indeed, there are plenty of contradicting reports over who had what name and when. The most common opinion is that Great Grandpa Trump, also known as Fred, anglicised his name from Friedrich Drumpf when he naturalised after moving to the US in 1896. Number 33. However, the Trump's biographer, Gwen de Blair, says that the name Drumpf originates in German tax documents from 1600, and the first use of Trump can be traced back to later that century. However, later, she contradicted herself and said that Friedrich Drumpf emigrated to the US in 1885, so who knows? Number 34. The Trump Organization currently owns 10 hotels around the world, from New York and Chicago to Ireland and even Panama. Number 35. As you're probably well aware, Trump is anything but camera shy. In fact, he has 24 acting credits to his name between 1981 and 2013. Everything from Home Alone 2 to The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. No doubt in his mind making him the greatest actor in American history. It's almost all cameos, but hey, all publicity is good publicity. Provided you don't brag about grabbing people by the... <clears throat> Although that worked, apparently. Number 36. Not everyone's happy with Trump's lengthy IMDb page. According to Matt Damon, Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. The main reason Trump managed to get his face in so many cameras was by leveraging his vast property empire as a bargaining chip in exchange for getting a Hello Mr. Trump in the script. So, in other words, if you want to shoot in one of his buildings, he contractually has to be in the movie. Number 37. Donnie's most famous role, however, is his gig as the host of The US Apprentice, racking up a total of 186 episodes from 2004 to 2015. The show earned him two Emmy nominations. That's all well and good, but you Americans don't know The Apprentice until you've seen the OG himself, by which I mean old geezer, Alan Sugar, whose beard literally looks like it's made of sugar. Number 38. Speaking of which, Trump and Alan Sugar aren't particularly friendly. Donald Trump has previously called Sugar a small timer, and Sugar has claimed that Trump is not in his class when it comes to hosting The Apprentice, and has also criticized Trump's plan to build an enormously unfeasible border wall between the United States and Mexico. So it's basically the billionaire equivalent of Jersey Shore, I assume. Number 39. In The Apprentice, Trump became known for his phrase, you're fired. He even once attempted to trademark the phrase, which I assume would mean that businesses would owe Trump royalties every time they sacked someone. That's how trademarks work, right? Number 40. Trump made $5.6 million a year, or $375,000 per episode, as the host of The Apprentice. Imagine if we got $375,000 for every one-on-one facts video we made. <laughs> I'd probably buy the office a margarita machine and keep the rest myself. And give some to Jennifer Lawrence, obviously. Number 41. Trump loves Scotland. Which isn't all that weird considering he's half Scottish. Besides, why wouldn't he? Scotland gave us the deep fried Mars bar, a true delicacy which might be the most American thing ever that isn't actually American. Mmm, I feel hungry and sick at the same time, but I'm getting off topic. The meaning of life. He even has property over there, the Trump Turnberry Resort in Ayrshire and the Many Resort in Aberdeenshire. But a lot of Scots aren't exactly pleased about it. When he touched down on the campaign trail in June 2016, he was snubbed by politicians and greeted by protesters, brandishing incredibly Scottish signs including Humpty Trumpty and Trump your ball bag. For those of you who aren't fluent in Scottish English, that's Trump you ball bag. Number 43. In 2010, Trump was awarded an honorary degree in business administration from the University of Scotland. Sadly for him, however, the university revoked his degree after his controversial stance on Muslims entering the US. Number 44. Donald Trump once tried to stop the building of a wind farm in Scotland because it would ruin the view from his golf resort. They should have just put pictures of Rosie O'Donnell on the back of them just to piss him off even more. Number 45. But wait, there's more Scottish antics. Trump has made several attempts to evict a Scottish farmer named Michael Forbes. Forbes has refused to sell his farm, which angered Trump, who subsequently called Forbes disgusting and said that he lives in a pig-like atmosphere. Forbes has responded in kind, in a very Scottish way, by referring to Trump as an, and I'm quoting here, asshole. Number 46. Later on, Michael Forbes was awarded the Top Scott Award, an accolade that is voted on by the Scottish people. 
Trump was so enraged by this that, in possibly the biggest overreaction in history, he banned whiskey made by Glenn Fiddich, the guys who sponsored the award, from all of his properties and called for a boycott. Number 47. For all his criticisms, most of which are kind of legitimate, Trump ran a pretty impressive campaign, mainly in terms of pure odds. I mean, very few people at all thought he would actually get there. According to William Hill Betting Agency, his odds of becoming president dipped as low as 100 to 1 in 2015, compared to Jeb Bush at 7 to 2 and Hillary Clinton at 1 to 1. Well, we all know how that worked out. Number 48. But since then, it's become a bit of a Trumpultuous time for the president. Just so we're clear here, guys, that's not me being a liberal cuck, it's actually me being a statistical snowflake. According to aggregate polls, Trump has the worst first 100 days of any president in the last 77 years when it comes to approval ratings. And that 77 years is only because that's as far back as the polls go. He must be so tired of winning. Number 49. The only president who came close to this was Gerald Ford in 1974, who came in at 45 compared to Trump's 42%. Number 50. Trump has spent decades cultivating his image as a business mogul, but as you can imagine from what I told you earlier, he doesn't exactly make stellar decisions all the time. At one point, he owed $3.4 billion, which is a lot more than some small countries. Number 51. Trump's biggest ever loss came in 1995, which, according to his tax returns, totaled over $900 million for the year, which mostly came down to failed business ventures. But on the plus side, he was still rich enough to lose the better part of a billion dollars and still have diamond-encrusted doors. Number 52. Back in 2006, you know, just as that historic financial crisis was looming overhead, Trump started Trump Mortgages. And you can probably tell how that went. The venture did just a third of the 3 billion expected business in its first 12 months. It was very quickly relicensed to another company and shut down entirely within a few years. Number 53. Just one year later, Trump struck a deal to sell his own brand of steaks, unsurprisingly called Trump Steaks, in association with the sharper image, you know, the home appliance and gadget shop. He even produced a TV ad for the partnership, claiming that when it comes to great steaks, I've just raised the stakes. <laughs> it's a good thing Trump's not in the YouTube game. With wordplay like that, he could put me out of a job. Number 54. Trump claimed the stakes were the best ever, but people who actually ate them tended to disagree. Though there are some, undeniably, who enjoyed the stakes, including the New York Times, who called them undeniably good, over 50% of reviewers on QVC.com gave them either one or two stars out of five. The words dreadful, greasy, and gross have been thrown around, and even those who did like them pointed out that Trump's stakes were several times as expensive as others. Number 55. As such, Trump's stakes didn't sell well at all. They just didn't. According to Sharper Images' then CEO, Jerry Levin, he would have been surprised if they sold $50,000 worth, which isn't much considering they range from $199 to $999. But on the plus side for Levin, he says people would come into Sharper Image confused about Trump's face on the catalogs and would just buy something else instead. Maybe that was Trump's game all along, but probably not. Number 56. Okay, one last weird business venture, Trump Vodka in 2006. This one was actually a lot more successful than the stakes and the mortgages. The spirit made $4.3 million in its first year, mainly on the back of Trump's premium image and the similarly premium 30 karat gold leaf bottles. Number 57. Things started to go downhill very quickly for Trump Vodka though. Sales halved by 2008 and the distillery that made it went bankrupt by 2010, selling off half its assets to Mexican drinks manufacturers, according to Bloomberg. Number 58. On the plus side, Trump Vodka saw a resurgence in popularity when he ran for president. Not that you could get hold of any, it hasn't been in production since 2011, but the few bottles still available have become chase collector's items. Number 59. All this may seem a little odd, considering the fact that Trump is a lifelong teetotaler, meaning he has never drunk a single drop of alcohol, the only president to ever have done so, which is actually pretty admirable in some regards. I mean, I can't stop drinking and stuff, but then again, weird that he owns a vodka brand. Number 60. The reason for Trump's drinking abstinence is pretty tragic. His older brother, Freddie, had become an alcoholic by the late 60s, only getting worse through the next decade and eventually dying from his destructive habit in 1983 at the age of just 42. Number 61. The New York Times, which we all know Trump loves, analyzed all 60 of Trump's business ventures, finding that about one third of them could be considered successes. 
The second third got somewhere but had major problems like lawsuits or government investigations, and the other third pretty much failed instantly or never got off the ground. No wonder he loves that newspaper. Number 62. You might think that a 33% success rate isn't all that, but actually Trump did pretty well with it, as much as it pains me to compliment him. For comparison, only 1 in 5 new British businesses are expected to still exist after 5 years, and only 1 in 10 Silicon Valley businesses is expected to make a profit at all. In all fairness, most startups don't have a multi-billionaire at the helm, but still… Number 63. Trump declared his intention to run as president on June the 16th, 2015 at Trump Tower, New York. I mean, where else would he have done it? It was the infamous speech where he appeared to call Mexican immigrants rapists, criminals, and some good people. He also promised to build the even more infamous border wall that Mexico is definitely paying for, despite the fact that the Mexican government has stated several times that they have no intention of doing so. Even former Mexican President Vicente Fox has said several times that he, and I quote here, will not pay for that wall. Well, okay then, put it in words you can all understand. Nintendo 64 Trump has previously set his sights on slightly smaller targets. He's previously flirted with becoming New York governor, but ultimately announced on Twitter that, although he would have won, he had much bigger plans. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Number 65. His very first presidential toe dip came in 1987, when he gave a speech warning of the dangers posed by the like of Japan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and even nice people, that's a quote by the way, that he was tired of, as well as other countries laughing at America. Does any of this sound familiar, by the way? People were even brandishing signs reading, vote for an untrump honor. Huh. He didn't say in the speech he'd run specifically, but he said we'd be wishing we had the right person if America made the wrong choice in 1988. And by we, I mean the American public back in uh, the 80s, because I was neither born nor in America. Number 66. After that first foray into politics, Trump made political waves in 1999, 2004, 2008, 2012, and 2013. Considering he made basically the same speech 30 years ago as he's making now, at least we can say he's consistent. Number 67. Ah, I might have to scratch that last remark about consistency. How embarrassing, I literally just said it. That's because Trump is a Republican president, but he hasn't always been an elephant. He was a donkey too. In case you think I've dropped an E, I haven't. In other words, he was a registered Democrat from 2001 to 2009, and an independent for a couple years either side of that time. Number 68. Trump's favourite food is steak, which is fine. I love steak too. He likes his well done, which I'm less okay with, but still, fine. The last straw though, is that he likes steak with ketchup. That's like icing your cake with, well, ketchup. 101 Facts always strives for fairness, but come on, Donnie, you're better than that. Well, I don't know actually about that, but don't do it. Number 69. Donald Trump has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, specifically the 2327th, which he got for The Apprentice. However, people keep defacing it. In late 2016, a man attacked it with a sledgehammer, and a few months earlier, someone stealthily sprayed a mute symbol over it. Hilaire. It didn't work, though. Number 70. According to CNN, back in 1999, Trump proposed a one-time tax of 14.25% on individuals with a net worth of over $10 million or more, claiming it would raise over $5 trillion to be used to erase America's national debt. I can only assume he's changed his mind, because that hasn't happened yet, and weirdly, it's similar to what Bernie Sanders has been saying this whole time. Huh, weird. Number 71. Donald Trump is also known for his odd hairdo, which sort of looks fake, but is actually apparently all natural, baby. To achieve this look, Trump apparently blow dries his hair forward and then combs it backward, and it's also rumoured that Melania cuts his hair for him when it gets too long. Number 72. Trump's interesting approach to his hair is apparently due to him being terrified of going bald, and once stated that the worst thing a man can do is go bald. He seems to really be rigidly sticking to that weird morale structure. Number 73. Donald Trump is also super down with da kids, and took part in the insanely popular ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. He was assisted in his wetting by Miss America and Miss Universe, which are competitions by the way that he owns. Number 74. Oh, did we not mention that already? Between 1996 and 2015, Trump owned, either partially or entirely, the Miss Universe, Miss USA, and Miss Teen USA beauty pageants. He has since been accused of, and has bragged about, intentionally walking in on contestants while they're getting dressed. Hmm. Number 75. A magazine called Spy once mailed 13 cent checks to some of the world's richest people just to see who would cash them. The only people to do so were an arms dealer and Mr. Donald J. Trump. That makes him smart, I think. 
Hey, that 13 cents could go on, uh, um, uh, no, nothing's worth that anymore. Number 76. Donald Trump once tried to sue an author for $5 billion because he referred to him as a millionaire instead of a billionaire. It's a good thing someone that thin-skinned is the leader of the free world, huh? <laughs> oh, what if he sees this? Number 77. Despite his reputation for being extremely litigious, Trump himself has been involved in 3,500 legal cases. By a lot of people, actually, including business partners, contractors, clients, employees, and banks. Number 78. Trump is known to dislike shaking hands with people and is even a self-professed germaphobe. His aversion to germy services even prevents him from touching the ground button in lifts. What about every other button? Number 79. This may explain why when Trump absolutely has to shake someone's hand, it's usually, um, weird. Trump pulls people towards him in a strange jerking motion, which is apparently an alpha male display of superiority. I guess nothing asserts dominance like dislocating a shoulder. Number 80. The creators of the Back to the Future series have confirmed that the character Biff Tannen, who at one point becomes a super rich and very powerful lobbyist, was based on Donald Trump. Oh boy, that doesn't end well, huh? Number 81. Speaking of Back to the Future, by which I mean going back in the past a bit, don't worry, it's complicated, but hey, I only did a link. Trump also starred in Zoolander. Blue Steel. Number 82. In fact, Donald Trump is actually a member of the Screen Actors Guild, along with his former advisor Steve Bannon, who is apparently a failed film writer, having once written a rap musical about the LA riots. <laughs> Good grief. Number 83. Trump has even won an award for his acting, though not a particularly prestigious one. In 1990, he won a Razzie for the worst supporting actor for his role in Ghosts Can't Do It. The Razzies, by the way, are a series of sarcastically given awards bestowed on those who excelled in horrible performances in the cinematic arts. Number 84. Trump is very pedantic about his own height. Most sources put him at six foot two, but he insists that he's six foot three. Every inch matters, apparently. Number 85. Trump is known to be sensitive about the size of his hands, too, as many people have pointed out and mocked him for having short fingers. Even primary opponent Marco Rubio joked that despite being six foot two, he has the hands of someone who is five foot two. <laughs> oh, Marco Rubio, that stand up career is waiting for you, my man. Number 86. In news that is at once surprising and also not even slightly surprising, in 1989, Trump released his own board game. Apparently, it was, and I quote here, a total flop. Number 87. Donald Trump is known for making controversial statements about the Central Park Five, a group of black men from New York who were accused of raping a woman in Central Park. Trump took out full-page advertisements in four New York newspapers, calling for the reintroduction of the death penalty as punishment, before the men were eventually proven to be innocent. Number 88. At one point, allegations of discrimination were levelled at Trump Management Corporation, with claims that his companies were directed not to rent to people of a certain race. Trump fought the case in court until a number of current and past employees stated that they had been required to report the race of the applicants and to discourage all black applicants. Trump then decided to settle the case out of court. Number 89. Despite Trump's contemporary views on immigration being highly restrictive, according to Time magazine, Trump Tower was constructed in part by Polish illegal immigrants working for less than minimum wage. Number 90. Donald Trump once claimed to have never used an ATM. To be fair to him, if you are indeed very, 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 very rich, why would you need to? I mean, perhaps for the sheer thrill of trying something new? Try new things, Donnie, you might like it. Number 91. The British Parliament has actually debated whether or not to allow President Trump to enter the UK, after declaring his intention to ban Muslims' entry to the United States. This happened after a petition to deny Trump the right to visit our lovely nation gained hundreds of thousands of signatures, eventually racking up 586,930 in six months. Number 92. Trump is known for his love of the world's most <clears throat> thrilling sport, golf. Indeed, Trump owns and operates 18 golf courses around the world. Number 93. In fact, Trump once offered to let then-President Barack Obama, or as I call him, Barry Obama's, play golf for free at any of his courses. With one notable catch, Obama would have to resign. Obviously, the tantalizing prospect of free golf was not tantalizing enough, as instead, Obama opted to remain the prez. Number 94. 
Even though Trump is extolled as a paragon of the American dream, as someone who's made his money through grit and determination, many have pointed out they inherited so much money from his father that if he had just put his inheritance into an index fund, he would actually have the same net worth. Number 95. Trump is also a prolific tweeter, possibly the tweetiest American president ever. Which isn't difficult really, given the site was only started in 2006, two years before the election of the previous president, Barry Obama. Still, Trump tweets approximately 370 times a month, and gains roughly 67,000 new Twitter followers in the same space of time. Number 96. Trump's famous phallic residence, Trump Tower, was used as setting of the fictional Wayne Enterprises in the wildly popular film The Dark Knight Rises, starring Christian Bale and Trump Hardy. Number 97. Trump once sued comedian Bill Mayer for suggesting at least one of his parents was an orangutan, which was a dig at Trump's orangey tan. Trump eventually withdrew the lawsuit. Number 98. Trump also had his own university for a while, predictably called Trump University. Trump University was not accredited, but claimed to be a real estate training program, and ultimately prompted a number of lawsuits made by students who claimed they were defrauded. Man, that guy cannot stay out of court, huh? Number 99. Apparently, Trump's two favourite movies are Citizen Kane and Gone with the Wind. I mean, they are classics, Citizen Kane, I get, but Gone with the Wind? I can't picture him watching that for some reason. Number 100! Trump has stated that he works about 85 hours a week and sleeps just 4 hours a night, usually from 1am to 5am. That makes me tired just to read. No wonder he's so grumpy all the time. Number 101! Lastly, but certainly not leastly, Donald Trump once offered to be Mike Tyson's personal financial advisor. Which, you know, makes sense, right? I think. Probably not really. Anyway, that's all on the Donald for now, but if you want another one, let me know in the comments below and I will endeavour to do my best. Anyway, latest POTUS. Mboard time! Watch these videos, they're really good, trust me. Bye!